Hello, welcome. Are we live? I think so. Awesome. We will get started. Uh, let me know in the chat, maybe where you're from, or um, maybe if you've done other butt series paintings with me before. And we'll wait to get a few more people tuned in watching with us live. My name is Chris. Maybe we've painted uh, together in the past. Maybe you've done another butt series painting with me. This is, believe it or not, the 13th of the butt series. We've done um, safari butts. We've done barnyard butts. We've done human butts on the beach. What else have we done? Dinosaur butts. That was fun. So this is number 13. Can you believe it? And there's so many more butts in the world to paint. So make some suggestions in the in the chat there, the live chat. What are some upcoming butts you would like to see or paint? Let me know um, in the chat. Maybe it's your birthday. Give you a shout out. I will go over the supplies, um, most of which you can see right on the screen here. And of course, um, even though this is live, you still have the ability to hit pause and rewind during the live. So if you need to, let's say, take a break or um, you need a little bit more time to work on a particular step, or if you need to run and grab something that um, that you need, you can hit pause and then come right back. This technology, it can do a lot. Let's, yeah, I'll slowly go over sort of what we see here and then probably some more people might tune in as we go. So some kind of surface to paint on. So I'm gonna do it on a canvas, any size canvas, any brand canvas that you wanna do would be fine or maybe a beautiful paper, if you have some lovely um, mixed media paper, or there is um, pads of paper specifically meant for doing acrylic paintings on. That would be wonderful. Maybe something a little thicker in terms of paper. I wouldn't necessarily do this on like printer paper. That's a little thin for acrylic paint, but any sort of art media paper would do. Or what about wood? Or uh, maybe you have a t-shirt and some fabric paint. That would be awesome to see. What if you want to try a completely different medium? So not acrylic, maybe watercolor. Then you would need watercolor paper. What if you want to do a, uh, maybe like a chalk pastel or an oil pastel version of this? You can get some lovely drawing paper to do that on. I would love to see all different kinds of mediums used to make this composition. Um, markers, give some kids some markers and have, have at it. I've got some paint brushes here for my paint. I sort of grabbed like a big, medium and a small. They don't have to be these shapes. They could be round ones. This is like a flat one. This is also flat. So just something like big, medium, small. We'll use the big one on the background. We'll use the medium on, say, the animals. And we'll use the small one to do some, some outlines, let's say. Big, medium, small, any brand, any, any sizes, really. I have some acrylic paint in this very fancy um, styrofoam container. This is my palette today. I just need three colors if you're following along with this color scheme. But, of course, you can switch it up. What if you want a pink and purple sky instead of blue and black? What if you want to do um, a brown rabbit, uh, orange fox, and a, a black bear? You could totally do that. Anything you want to do. But if you're following along with this color scheme, we just need three colors, uh, some blue, a little black there, and there's quite a bit of white here. Um, but again, any colors you want to do. If you want to do a, a sunset sky instead of this dark stormy sky, that would look really cool. I've got some water to wash my brush. I've got a bit of paper towel to dry my brush. 
or you could use a rag, a paint rag. Um, I've got one somewhere around here. Um, I did grab some optional supplies that I had listed um, with the original description. Optional supplies include, so I've got some thin card. So think about a cereal box, or in this case, a fruit snack box, um, granola bar box, thin card. So we can do those stormy, windy, snowy lines. We're gonna put paint on the edge and tap, tap, tap. Or if you have like a thicker paper, like cardstock, or this is watercolor paper, it's a little bit thicker paper. You'll also paint a little on the edge and then stamp it on there to make those lines. This is a is like so good for making thin, consistent lines instead of taking a paintbrush and trying to paint all these thin lines. That would take a long time. They'd be kind of lumpy. This is the easiest way to do that. But that's optional. And I've got scissor if you want to like maybe cut it smaller. Optional thin card. And then for the um, the fur texture of the animals themselves, of course, you could, you know, take your paintbrush and dab the fur texture. That would work completely. But if you want to be a little bit more experimental with the fur texture, I grabbed some. So I did this original with uh, a little bit of bubble wrap, bubble wrap, and I just put a little rubber band on there. And then I dip in the paint. And then I dabbed the fur texture with a bit of bubble wrap. Maybe you don't have bubble wrap around. This is just a wad of um, like cling film, cling wrap, plastic wrap, wad that up, dip it in paint, dab, 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 get some interesting texture with that. Other ideas, a sea sponge, you can get those at crafty, arty places, sea sponge, dip it in paint, dab, dab, dab for some texture. And then another idea would be um, just some Q-tips. There's a little rubber band there and I would dip those in paint and then dab, dab, dab. Some lovely texture right here. Wouldn't that be fun? Optional, you could totally fill in these animals kind of like a smooth with your, uh, with your paintbrush. Just a fun experiment for our 13th butt series. So like most of the butt series, like most of my paintings, I like to start with a bit of a sketch. So I'm gonna take a paintbrush. We are gonna do our sketch in paint, but you could do it in pencil. If you have a pencil nearby and you're more comfortable sketching these shapes with a pencil, by all means do that. Get my brush a little wet. I'm going to do my sketch in like, you could do a light blue, it could be a light gray, just something lighter. So I'm gonna do a light blue. I'm gonna get a little bit of blue, tiny little spot of blue. Here's some white. Let's get a little blue and white going for some light blue. And we're gonna need light blue later anyway, so don't worry about making like too much. I'm gonna get a little bit more water in here, get a little bit runnier more fluid with a little water in there, especially if you have thick paint. If you have very thick paint, get a little water on the brush, mix that in. Nice light baby blue. I mean, the lights, I've got so many lights aimed at me. It looks kind of very pale. It's darker in real life. It just needs to be dark enough that you can see it, right? And don't worry if you are not a drawer, if you can't draw anything, these are basic shapes, you can do this. All right, I'm thinking we'll start with the biggest butt first, our polar bear butt. And I mean, we definitely want him to be less than halfway. So let's say this is it's about half, I would say, of the total canvas. I want him to be less than that. So let's say, you could even make a little mark for yourself. Let's say that's about half. I want the polar bear's butt down here. Your polar bear's butt could be round like a circle. It could be more oval. It could be more, um, maybe more pear shaped, a little, a little thinner at the top and rounder at the bottom. And I kind of give him a little indent there, like, like 
cheeks, two cheeks, right? Most, if not all mammals have two cheeks. It is true. And give him some, give him some legs, quite thick legs. They could have a bit of a curve to them. They could be just straight down. And then my feet don't quite make it all the way to the bottom in this particular one, but if you want them to go all the way to the bottom, you can. I just kind of have the ankles comes out a little bit for that heel. I guess it would be the heel there, thinner at the ankle. And my, see my sketch, it's all messy, multiple lines. Like even if I suddenly wanted to make my polar bear's butt bigger, I could just go like this to like make it bigger. No need to like erase anything. So that's like a good start for a butt. And polar bears have quite big tails, surprisingly. And in this case, the tail is sort of covering the um, cleftal horizon. We'll call it that, the, the crack. <laughs> and yeah, it could be like long and skinny. Could This one's a little bit more bulgy at the top. They have quite a big tail. It's not like a tiny little like bunny tail, like, like that's quite, quite long, all things considered. Yeah, and this is just a sketch. It might end up being bigger later, might end up being smaller later, something like that. I'm gonna put just like a rough horizon line. So does your Arctic have kind of bumpy land? Is it smooth? Is there maybe, you could even do like mountains could be rolling hills, just some kind of a horizon. Sure. Doesn't have, my, this one doesn't have to be the same as this one. That's okay. So this is meant to be a fox. It's hard to show a fox without, you know, there's no head for the ears. There's no feet. So really the only thing we're, we're showing is his tail and make it look sort of foxy in that it's a little bit bushy. Um, yeah, it's tough to draw an animal that's on another animal that has another animal on top. Let's do sort of a oval or a circle. This will be our fox and he's quite a bit smaller than the polar bear. If you felt strongly about having the fox, say, standing up, he could be standing up on top of the polar bear. I would make his body a little smaller, and then I would have skinny little legs for the fox if you wanted to have the fox standing instead of, I guess he would be sitting or crouching in this particular case. And then, yeah, give him as foxy a tail as you can as you can make. Have it quite puffy and kind of swirl to the side here. This is really the only thing that's distinguishing this as a fox. Or you could come up with a different animal. Hmm. It doesn't have to be a white animal either. So yeah, and even though there's like lines on top of other lines and it's getting kind of jumbled in here, when you go to paint it, it's it's all gonna be white. You're gonna cover up those odd lines that you don't need. I mean, that's really, that's really all I'm gonna do for the fox. It's pretty simple. If you wanted to, most of the butt series is literally just the butt. But on occasion, I have in the past had sort of their faces kind of, you know, peeking over their own shoulder, looking kind of to the side or looking a little bit to the back. So if you wanted like a little bit of a polar bear's face or ear or head kind of peeking out to the side or the fox, if you wanted a little bit of a fox face pointing just 
over the shoulder. You could add that. And it might sort of help with the visual of what animal you're going for here. And let's put a sweet little bunny on top. Now, my bunny, he is a chonky bunny. Like, his, he's the same size as the fox. I might make my bunny a little smaller here, make him a little bit more delicate so he doesn't look as big as the fox because that's a big bunny. And I feel like in the Arctic, the bunnies run a little small. Give him a body, give him a little head. Any shape, any size. This guy's quite oval. I want to make this guy a little bit more small and delicate. Give him some ears. They could be floppy ears. Any kind of ears. They could be like ones sticking up and then ones kind of like that kind of an ear. And give him a little tail. His little tail right down here. Okay, so this composition is a little bit different than this one. And yours could be completely different from this. What if you decide you want to have um, the animal sort of, ooh, like this way. You put this like this and you go polar bear, fox, bunny. Mm, that's, an, that's another composition for another day. That would be interesting too. Horizontal landscape. Okay. Really, that's all we need to do for this sketch. It's pretty simple. Give that little brush a rinse and a dry. Yeah, it's okay if yours is messier. It will all work out. I'm going to paint the sky first, that nice, rich, dark sky. Again, you could do any colors, anywhere. I'm gonna do sort of like a very dark blue and then even darker into black almost down here. Down here is like black and blue mixed together. But what about some beautiful baby blue sky going into darker blue? Um, what about maybe blues going into teals? Get a little green going on. Blues and purples. Um, I mentioned like a sunset. You could go yellow, orange, pink, sunset, sunset snowstorm. That could be the title. I can use a big brush. Nice big brush covers a lot of area quickly. I got it wet. Get your brush wet. So I'm going to use this blue that I have here. Let's just take a little sample here. That is a nice rich blue. Look at that. If you wanted to lighten your blue, get a little white. Well, we have some baby blue right here. Mix a little of that in there. See, that's a little softer blue. Up to you, whatever you wanna do. Um, and then I'm gonna get, as we get further down, I'll mix in some black to darken it. But you could mix in a little, little yellow, make it a little greener. Mix in a little pink, make it purplier. Yeah, I'll stick with this nice, rich, rich blue. And then we have a nice dark sky that'll contrast lovely with the white of the snowstorm. We'll really be able to see that snowstorm well. Okay, all these things get out of my way. Yeah, I mean, this is lighter than, than the original blue I had, but Different day, different composition. I'm in a different mood. And when you're going around your animals, if you get a little bit on the animal itself, it's okay. Like if I'm just painting away and I'm, oh, 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 no, it's fine. We're going to paint over that. I'm painting away here. And it's like, oh, oh, dear. It's not a problem. Not a problem at all. And it's okay if you have um, visible brush strokes. In my painting, there's lots of sort of visible brush strokes in the sky. Get some blue in here. Yeah, get close to your animals. It's okay if the sketch gets a little bit covered up. You 
you know, the ears are so little. If you accidentally paint over an ear, it's okay. Do you like to paint the edges of your canvases? So, I mean, the edge here. I usually don't, but that's just me. You can totally paint your edge to match your sky, to match your snow down here. So it, um, it kind of completes the project, right? Gives it a finished look. Nice blue. Yeah, this is more of a, maybe like an afternoon snowstorm versus this is maybe like a evening or nighttime snowstorm. Okay, how far are we gonna go? I went to about there. I'm gonna mix a little black, little into my blue, just to darken it a bit. Oh yeah, that really. So just put it like right next to it and then I'm gonna blend the two together in a bit. So this is a darker blue with a little black, black and blue. If your paint is kind of thick and you're having trouble getting into those little tiny canvas texture, little dots, and there's like little white speckles, get a little water, a little water on your brush, and it'll help fill in those little tiny little gaps. Because all canvas have like that texture. Sometimes it's hard to fill in. Here we go, I've got some darker blue, lighter blue. I'm gonna just rinse off my brush a little bit. Not, doesn't have to be perfect. And then where the two colors meet, I'm just gonna kind of smudge them, bring some of the darker up, bring some of the lighter down, just kind of mush them together and it, it'll be more seamless, like an ombre effect, a gradient effect but I definitely got most of the paint off my brush. Okay, so on this side, I've smooshed the two colors together where they meet. So it's a little bit more seamless a transition. This is like light, dark, no blending. So let's do this side too. Smooching them together. Sometimes I wipe off my brush if there's like too much paint buildup. We don't want buildup. Yeah, so if you're doing maybe more than two colors, if you're doing maybe yellow, orange, pink, you would just, where the two colors meet, mush those together, where the next two colors meet, mush those together. Yep, and I've got Look at how many visible brush strokes I have going on. It is not smooth at all in the least. Don't worry about it. The All the snowflakes, the wind is very distracting on top of that. So it's gonna look great. All right. So yeah. Sky. And yeah, my sort of horizon line, it doesn't have to be crisp in the least. Nope. It's fine just like that. There we go. If you have any really thick, globby paint anywhere, wipe off your brush. Maybe even rinse it off. Wipe it off. And then just smooth it out. Smooth it out as flat as you can those thick globs, because those are going to take a long time to dry. So just smudge them flat. I don't have too many. Oh yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna be dry in minutes, moments. Okay, give your 
brush, a good little wash. We're going to do some white. And it's okay if the white gets a little bit of blue in it. Um, but we just don't want too much blue into it. All right, leave that be, give it time to dry. Don't keep messing with it, it'll never dry. Let's do the snowy ground, white. And because like, because the legs are also gonna be white, it's definitely okay if you get white on the leg too. They're gonna be white anyway. But I'm gonna focus my white on the, the snow, the ground. I like to do horizontal strokes in uh, really anytime I'm really doing the ground, whether it's grass or hills or sands, even water. I like to do horizontal back and forth. And I'm just going really carefully like near that edge where the two wet paints are. I'm just going carefully so I don't blend them yet. We are going to maybe smudge it a little bit. So this is just white and oops, the legs are gone. It's fine. I know where they are. And even later, if I make new legs and they're not exactly where the old legs used to be, I think it'll be okay. So there's some beautiful, lovely white Again, nice and smooth, no thick globbies. If you have a thick globby, just smooth it out flat. This will dry in no time. And then, so I do want my snow to have a little bit of blue in it. So you can see here, there's little bits of blue, little bits of blue, little bits of blue. So we have some blue, conveniently, really close, and it's still wet. If you just kind of get your brush and get it on the sky a little bit and get a little, there's a little blue then in my brush and then you could kind of streak it. It's very pale, very light. So very pale streaks. Get a little bit more on this side. Streak some of that in there. And it's okay if that line between the snow and the sky is a little bit blurry. It's a snowstorm. It could be, you know, snow is being kicked up by the wind. You can make little, little mounds, little bumps. And if you're not getting enough blue in your snow from dragging it a little bit here, you could just get some blue from here, just a little tap a little tap of blue on your brush and just kind of streak it in, but light. We want it to be mostly white. It is snow. Yeah, so here's some, just some little hills here and there. Yeah, mine's not particularly tidy. It's like on purposely streaky. Don't spend too much time on it. Just when you have like a, a good amount, a little bit of blue throughout, let it be. Don't cover it up too much. Don't blend it out too much. You're going to lose those lovely streakies. I think I'll stop there. Yeah, I think that's enough as I do one more. <laughs> one more pass. Just light, light. <clears throat> It looks like he's like buried in snow. That's pretty funny. Pretty funny. Okay, let's give that guy a little rinse, a little wash. There we go. 
Again, everything's nice and smooth. There's no thick globbies. This is gonna dry pretty quickly. I do want this to dry a little longer. If you have something nearby, like a book or a um, piece of cardboard or a fan, what do I have? I've got this thing from the dollar store. It's like this wooden tray. That makes a good fan. Give that a little fan. <coughs> Pardon me. Have a sip of tea. <clears throat> hmm, yeah, I'm liking this sort of lighter blue that I have going. But, you know, store st snowstorms, they get pretty darn dark. Other animals could you add in this composition? Maybe like, hmm, it'd be tough to add like a big caribou. I think that's like really big. Might not work, but if you felt strongly about a caribou, what about like a little snow lemming? There's gotta be some snow lemmings that could stack bunch of lemmings. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. All right, let's give that a few more minutes to dry. I can already see um, it's getting less glossy to my eye. It's getting less shiny. So the water is evaporating. It's drying. While, uh, while we wait for these to dry a few more minutes, while you're fanning, I want to show you some upcoming events with me. I always like to show you What's coming up next? And then I'll also tease the next YouTube Live free one with me. It's not done, but I, I'll tease it for you. Okay, I've got some really cute stuff coming up. I mostly teach watercolors. If you've been with Artist Palette Germ Region for a little while, uh, you'll have seen a lot of my watercolor things. And some of the other butt series is watercolor. Um, so coming up in one week, I generally teach on Thursdays. In one week, we're going to do the video release, video premiere of Puffling Parents. They're Puffins and their little baby Puffling. That's what they're called. He's right there in the middle. And he's the dad's got like a mouthful of fish for him. Puffling Parents. So that'll be a video premiere. Uh, tickets on the website next Thursday that'll be released as a video recording. And then we're already into February, can you believe it? February 1st. Um, so uh, February, I wanna say the 5th, will be um, Lunar New Year. Year of the Dragon is coming up. So I have done a stippled dragon for the Year of the Dragon. This is pen, just pen. And you do get an outline for this one. Oh, and the puffins. You also get an outline for the puffins. Um, so tickets on the website. It's going to be February 1st. Again, a video release of the Year of the Dragon. Stippling. We've done a number of stippling projects in the past, including the last YouTube Live with me was a snowman stippling. Silly snowman. If you liked that one, check out the dragon stippling. I'm really excited about this one, February 8th. So before Valentine's Day, this is made with coffee and tea, if you can believe that. So the purplish tones is a black cherry tea. And then the brown tones is coffee, instant coffee. But you could follow along with this one with regular watercolors, of course, and you get an outline for this one. And um, yeah, it's two women having a coffee date. And I did, I did intend for it to be a same sex couple. 
um, but you can interpret it how you like. It could be sisters, it could be like a mother-daughter coffee date. So coffee date's coming up February 8th. Tickets on the website. And then I might as well show you the one that was literally right next to it. Look at that one. I just made this. It's not even on the website yet. I called it Snowy Selfie. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> Can you imagine polar bears, these guys taking a selfie up at the Arctic? We're going to do this one February 22nd. Tickets on the website. Again, a video release. Watercolor and pen. So funny. We're going to draw... Whoop, I bonked that. We're going to draw that from scratch together. No outline for that. We're going to draw it together. You can give each polar bear sort of its own um, character. Let me show you... Do, do, do. I'll show you two more, and then I'll tease the next free one. These are cute. So my new... Um, experimental medium. I like trying different things. So I discovered these fabric paint. So this one is a matte finish fabric paint. And this one's like a shiny, puffy fabric paint. I thought with these, we could try like a stained glass effect. So here's what I came up with using puffy paint and watercolors. I called it Ginger Cat. So if you were here to touch it, the black is raised up from the fabric paint. Just like if you were like making a stained glass window, the, the metal between each piece of glass, the solder is a little bit raised. So it kind of feels like a stained glass too. And then we fill in the sections with watercolor and you get those cool kind of bloom effects like those abnormalities as the watercolor dries, those shapes that form. So I think that's gonna be fun. So again, this is gonna be a video release. We're gonna do this cat one, February 15th. So the day after Valentine's Day. So I didn't think I wanted to do Valentine theme after Valentine. And then we're gonna do this one, same thing, puffy paint, watercolor. Um, we're gonna do this one March 7th tickets on the website. Look at these scallops. Cool. I mean, everyone's different. Okay. That's all the finished works that I have to show you that are coming up. Let me tell you, tease you what we're going to do for leap day. So February does have a leap day this year, the 29th. And it's a Thursday. So I will be teaching. We're going to be on YouTube live. We're going to do a frog, a frog watercolor. I've only gotten as far as the outline. So everyone will get a printable, traceable outline of the frog. And then we'll fill it in together on YouTube Live right here on Leap Day. So the next time you see me on YouTube Live, we'll do this frog together. And it's going to be just like a beautiful rainbow of colors splashed on there. And I'm going to call it Hoppy Leap Day. Eh? I love puns. We're going to do that together. I can't wait. I'm going to, I'll finish that painting up like this weekend or early next week. And then we'll post that event so you can uh, get your email reminder when we go live for that one. Is it drier? Yeah. So it's like a little less, less shiny. Still a little tacky, but certainly more dry. That's the goal. If you've been fanning yours this whole time, yours will be plenty dry. So let's add some lovely kind of furry texture to our butts with one of the various materials I showed earlier. So we've got different options, Q-tips in a little bundle and then dab, 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 a sponge, sea sponge or other sponge, a bit of bubble wrap, and then put a little rubber band there, dab, 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 the bubble wrap, or this is just like plastic wrap, some garbage from my kid's lunch. I just wadded it up, dip, dip, dab, dab. That would be a good one too. Okay, I'm just losing dry paint all over the place here. I'm going to try the bubble wrap myself. Dip, dip, dip. And then 
like <clears throat> when I dip it in here, there's like a lot, like too much paint. So I'll probably dab it off to the side here to get some of it off. Or you can dab it on your paper towel or dab it right on my tablecloth. I can dab it right here just to get some of it off so it's not like blotty. And I'm just going to fill in all of these animals. If, you know, if you cover up some of the sketch, you still know where these shapes are. They're very simple animals, simple shapes. Like we'll have to get the legs back in here. So try, try that. You can try, um, what are these called? Q-tips, dab, dab, dab. Try some of that. And we definitely want some of these dabs, some of this fur texture to be on the background a little bit because the fur of the animals would go out beyond their body and be you know sort of shown at the edge of their body we don't want their body to be smooth is what i'm getting at we want to have textured bodies so you know i like that that's okay that one's pretty good this one's the original i'll try some of this plastic. Yep, it's also working. Maybe a little more difficult to control near the edges, but maybe this fox is just extra snowy right there. Yeah, I don't hate that. It's not my favorite one so far. Let's try. I'll try my sponge too, just to see what that would be like. Do. Yep, it's going to get you a nice kind of fuzzy edge, a sea sponge, or maybe a chunk of a, a kitchen sponge. And let's say you don't have any of these sort of optional, alternate paint applicators. Just use your brush. Use your brush. You can um, kind of jab and dab. Let's try that. Got some paint. I'm going to just kind of jab, dab. Go light, go heavy. We just want them looking kind of fuzzy, fuzzy around the edges. Yeah, that's not, not a bad tool. I mean, a paintbrush is made to put paint on things. So it is a good tool. I guess it's pretty good for the ears. It would be hard to do the ears with like this big wad of bubble wrap. Yep, I definitely want you to go beyond the shape, go a little bit onto the background, make them fuzzy edged. And we'll get their details back in there because right now it just looks like one big column of white and there's no nothing differentiating them. We'll get that back. On the fox's tail, I did a few like little flicky swoops. You could do that with medium brush or a little brush just to make it seem like the tail is more fox-like. A little bit of a swoop, swoopy tip. You can make it really bushy, really bushy foxy tail. All right. Um, I'm going to keep going with, I did, I did kind of like these guys, the Q-tips. I'm going to do his legs. Those got a little bit lost. Give them some new legs, invent some new legs. I forget how thick they were, but this seems like a good thickness. 
Yeah, it's hard to see his white leg against the white snow, but you should be able to see yours in front of you because you've got that blue. The blue is streaking in the snow, so it's different than the legs. Oh yeah, if you can kind of you can kind of see the texture if I hold it at an angle. The texture. Okay, do I want more? <clears throat> oh yeah, they're looking really fuzzy. bringing up close the edges they're all jagged dotty dabby and I've got some little specks of white where I accidentally sprayed some paint that's okay we're gonna add snow and make it even more snowy that's pretty good And we are going to shade these. We're going to have some shading so it looks more 3D. That's pretty good. All right, if you need more time to work on that step, you can hit pause. Hit pause and catch up. I'm going to make um, like a light blue. If you still have some light blue from earlier from the sketch, you can use some of that or mix another bit of light blue, so white and a bit of blue, baby blue, um, maybe medium blue, but more on the side of baby blue, lighter, lighter is better. And we're going to imagine that there's a light source. Maybe this is like deep Arctic winter and maybe the sun doesn't come up, but we still want to kind of imagine there's a light source somewhere. So let's imagine the light is coming from the top left. So I always kind of think about my, my lamp. I have a lamp right here shining on the animals. If a light was shining from this direction, that half of them, the left half of them would be in the light. It'd be brighter. So that means that the opposite side over here would be darker, that's the shady side. So anything on the right of an animal or on the underneath of an animal would be a little darker. So we're gonna dab some, some dark. So if you wanna use one of your tools that you've been using, any of those tools, or a brush for a little bit more control of the dabbing, use the brush. I'm gonna try the Q-tips are growing on me. So I've got like, I've got white here, but I have these ones that I haven't even touched. I might try this end for my blue dabs. So I've got some blue from earlier. If you need more, you can make some more. I probably will make some more just so I have lots. Light blue, baby blue, not too, not too medium. Okay, there we go. Now I got more. So remember, the right side or the underneath side. So the polar bear, his butt is quite big. So I'm going to dab some of this along his right side. Follow that curve. Dab, dab, dab. Dabs and smudges. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're not going for like realism here. It's certainly an interpretation. 
So we've got some blue along the right, kind of curved under this cheek, if you will. And I'll do some underneath this cheek because this is underneath something, the right or the underneath. Get some baby blue in there. So it's starting to get a little bit of a shape. All right, also the legs, the legs would have a shadow on the right side of each leg, the right side and the right side. If the, if the Q-tips aren't working for you, if these tools aren't working for you, try, try your medium brush and do some dabs, try your, even your baby brush and do some dabs. Whatever way you wanna do it. So I've got some dabs on the right and sort of the bottom, remember the underneath, his heel. Okay, I'll do that with the other leg. Again, the right side of the leg and then the underneath, the heel. And mine's messy, it's not exactly the same on both legs. One might have more than the other, that's okay. It's just fun to do. Fun to try new things. Okay, so there's his rear end. Let's not forget about his tail. We kind of lost the tail a little bit. So I certainly want to sort of re-outline the tail with some dabs. And I will do it on both sides because the tail of itself would probably cast a bit of a shadow on its own butt. So I'm doing a little bit of this light blue on sort of both sides. But when I add even more darker shadow, I'll probably just do the, the right side. But this just helps kind of re-outline where that tail was. Dab, dab, dab. That's kind of cute. We'll continue on. I might even get rid of some of these, make a little smaller version of this. What if I just hold? Three, I could hold three. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try holding three together and trying to dab. Let's stay together. Okay, I'll try dabbing along the fox's tail, the fox's behind, just sort of re outlining that again. Maybe two, I'm gonna do two. Just gentle, soft little dabs. So under the fox's bum, the right side of the fox, and then just sort of a light outline of the tail to get that back in there. Starting to get a little bit more shape now. It doesn't look like just a white column. <clears throat> Good. And then I'll do the same for the bunny, keeping in mind that little tail. right side of his body, the right side of his head, where the head and the neck, sort of the head and the shoulders kind of meet. 
doesn't have much of a neck, just head then shoulders. Even like a little bit on the right side of each ear. You can just do one, one Q-tip or your small brush and just dab lightly. The right side of both ears, each ear. Just a bit. There we go, starting to look more like critters. Cute. And we will shade it a little bit more. That's not the last of the shading. That's good. Yeah, so you don't have to go as fast as me. You can take your time. And if you need more time, just hit pause, dab away. And then we're going to shade a little bit more, just a little bit darker blue on some of like the shadiest spots. So where would it be the darkest of these places we've already added shading? And so here's the color. So more leaning towards medium blue, not super dark blue, but not, but it has to be uh, darker than this though. This is light. So we want you know, medium, something just darker on the side. So where would it be the most dark? I'm gonna mix a little more blue. So just grab a little bit more blue, put it in there. Now I know for sure it's darker because I just added more blue to the color I was just using. Maybe a little more. Any Anything darker than what you just had. That's pretty good. Get my little rubber band back. I did like the rubber band around the around the Q-tips. All right, I'm gonna get a little of that darker blue. Try some out. If it's not dark enough, add a little bit more blue in it. I might add a little more blue. Let's see. There we go, there's a little bit more. So I'm going to do even on top of some of that blue you did before, but just a little, a little less, just on the very edge, the very bottom of things where it would be the darkest. Say the, the, fox's tail maybe resting on the bear would have a little bit of a dark shadow underneath there. Put some dabs under there. Right, right along the very, very edge of the legs, the furthest right would be the darkest. A little bit underneath the feet here. This is kind of reminding me of stippling when we did our silly snowman. We were dot, dot, dotting the whole time. Okay, what about like the very, the very right edge of the fox, the very right edge of the bunny? Yeah, 
not not exactly covering everything you've already done. Don't want to cover it all up. There we go. That's like the right amount. See, it seems like a little bit more 3D now. It's pretty good. Are you guys as painty as I am? Good. Let's put that mass over here. Don't think I need those. That's looking good. I do want it to dry a little bit more. Let's work on, we'll probably work on some of these um, snowflakes, these six-sided snowflakes throughout. Then we'll probably do some of the black and then we'll do all of those snowstorm lines, the wind, let's call it, the could be even sleet. Yes, yeah, so you could use a thin brush and paint delicate six-sided little snowflakes to your heart's content. You could do different patterns, but I think the quickest, easiest way is I mentioned some thin card. So that's a fruit snack box, cereal box, granola bar box, uh, oatmeal box, cut a little flap off of it or thick paper. This is watercolor paper. It's a little thicker cardstock, thicker paper. Coupons, when you get like coupons in the mail and it's kind of like a thicker coupon paper, that works amazingly well too. I'm gonna use, I'll use a bit of this. So you want sort of a, I'll just rip a piece. There we go, a, a flat edge. That's not too big. So that's like, you know, about the width of my thumb. And we're gonna make an X and then a line through the X. X, line through the X. X, line through the X. X, line through the X. Six-sided snowflake, because that's what they are. They're six-sided, not, not eight. And I just dip, dip it in there. And then I like to kind of dip it, you know, off to the side to get most of the globby paint off. And try a little snowflake. I'll do boop. It's like a stamp. An X and a line through the X. Boom. Done. Do 50 more. <laughs> and we could do different sizes. X and a line through the X. It's okay if they're not even. X and a line right through and reload frequently. It's okay if some of the snowflakes are a little bit like, um, kind of jaggedy, if there's gaps, that's fine. It's already starting to look more magical with each snowflake line through the X. And I'm going to do a few more of this size, and then we could do a smaller size, we could do a bigger size. You can have some um, like kind of half on the page. It doesn't have to be fully, fully on the page. Here's half of the one going right off the edge. There you go. Now, do you want to do ones that are bigger than that or smaller than that? Wipe that off a little bit. So I could use, so I was using this small edge. What if I use this big edge to do my next ones? It has some big ones. What if I didn't want to do white ones? What if I want to do some light blue ones? Mmm. I could do that. Let's get some light blue going. What about pink snowflakes? What about purple snowflakes? Let's get some of that going. Anything you want. 
do you have any silver acrylic paint in your art supplies? Silver snowflakes, gold snowflakes. I'd love to see those. I'm going to try some blue. Ooh, that's a biggie. Is it too big? If it's too big, just make it smaller. Let's go like that. So it's a little bigger than my last set of snowflakes. And this is a very, very pale blue this time, just for variety. And there could be some down here on the on the snow itself. There could be some on on the animals themselves. <sighs> yeah, what if I put one right here on the on the cheek? On the left cheek? What about one on the fox? And you decide how many. What's the perfect amount? They could totally overlap too. And then what about some teeny tiny little bitty baby ones? I'm going to take that piece that I was using. I'm going to cut it in half. So I'm going to use this little edge and make the tiniest little tiny baby ones. Oh, why are you so globby? No, no more globs. So small. I like it. He's cute. Hmm, how many do you think we've done so far? At least 50, come on. I think so. You decide how many. Can't really see that one. Try to put my white snowflakes on like a colored part of the snow down here. sky if you like. That's looking quite quite nice, quite magical. A few more. Got lots of big ones. Tiny baby ones like on the animals themselves. Where else? On the leg, tail. I 
bet you're getting the hang of it now. I bet you have good hand-eye coordination now to make an X and then a line through the X. Running out of room. I can't decide. more and I'll be I'll be satisfied for now but you can always add some more later okay hmm. I think that's good for now for me but of course you can keep going uh, you could hit pause add as many as you like I will add a little bit of black to some of my animals and then we'll add all those snowy flurry lines. I'm going to get my little brush. Where's my little baby brush? Little baby brush. Black. A little water. I like to add a little water into my black to make it more flowy. And I like to twirl. I twirl my paintbrush in the paint. And then it makes the tip of the paintbrush kind of pointy, right? So I'm just going to use this black to kind of emphasize some of the shapes that are you know, a little bit blobby. Um, and also give the bear some uh, shadow. So down here under the feet, black or very dark blue if you want to do like a very dark blue sort of a shadow down here i'm actually going to make my shadow kind of trail off to the right because we were imagining this this light source was coming like this so i think the shadow of the feet would kind of go off to the right a little bit what do you think instead of straight down this is straight down but this is going to the right And mine's messy. It doesn't have to be perfect. Because the snow would be bumpy. The, the shadow would be a little lumpy too. Here we go. It's a little bit trailing to the right. I like that. Now it's up to you. You could do um, like kind of smoother lines to kind of outline this. I'm gonna do a little bit of a jaggedy line to kind of give it even more texture as if he has like a furry tail. Just do very light, wispy lines. I'm just going sort of outlining the sort of darkest areas. So the the very right side and make it kind of bumpy, wiggly, a little bit of fur texture. Yeah, so if you look right here where I've just added a little bit of black outlining, this looks more popping off the page than say these guys. It just helps a little bit. Let's do a little bit of this leg. Now on this example, I sort of only did sort of the darkest side. I didn't outline everything like the, the bright side. I kind of left it as is. I'm going to try just to try outlining both sides. But this is optional. Yeah. 
So here's, I outlined both sides of the legs. And then this is an example of just the dark side. So you choose which you like best. I think this makes it kind of pop more. I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep going. So just kind of jaggedy. Not even, I'm not even following exactly the, where the paint is. I just kind of made it up as I went along. And I'll do the tail. I'll do... Yep, all of my lines are kind of thick in some places, thin in other places, broken lines, wispy. Could also use a paint pen for this too, a black paint pen and kind of outline. Like, I like how that turned out. Just a very fine, light outline on most of it. Doesn't have to be all of it. That's kind of cute. Yeah, it finishes off a little bit. If you need more time, of course, Take more time, press pause. All right, I'm gonna add all of those stormy, windy lines. I'm gonna use this bit of card. I'm gonna literally put paint on the edge of this. If you had like, maybe like a bigger palette or a plate and you could dip this whole thing into paint all at once, you could do that. I'm just gonna literally take my brush, put white paint on the edge. Dab, 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 and stamp it. And it's okay, again, if some of the lines are broken lines, if they're a little bit thicker or thinner. And I've got all of my wind, all my weather going in one direction, kind of at a diagonal, maybe even a slight bit of a curve if your cardboard is bendy, you could just bend it slightly to give it a bit of a whooshing curve. And you just stamp it like we were stamping the, the snowflakes. Let's go with like that. And you could do a few stamps before it sort of um, runs out of paint, let's say. Yeah, that last one is pretty wispy, pretty pretty dry. Reapply some paint, just dab, dab, dab. Go right across the animals, right across the snow at the bottom. And most of, most of the snowflakes are already dry, so they're not going anywhere. They're not smudging anything. And then some of the black is still a little wet, but, but we did it so thin, so light. Most of the black is already dry. So that's not even getting on this. I don't have any black on there at all yet. Reload. And this is a great tutorial if you're just starting in the butt series. There's so many different butts 
that we've painted, some a little more complicated than others, but this is a perfect sort of introduction to the butts. Not a lot of colors, not too much complicated mixing. Perfect for kids. I'd love to see a kid's version of this. We have a wonderful Facebook group. It's called, oh, that's a thick one. It's called Artist Palette Painting Slash Drawing Support Group. Please feel free to join that group. Share photos of this painting or other paintings you've done with us. I love seeing every version. I love when multiple generations paint together and you see all the different styles. How much, how much wind do you want in your Arctic world? Everyone's will be different. And we're also gonna dot some dots too, because I love adding dots as snow, or it could be stars really. You could interpret it as stars. All right, how much more can I fit in here? Certainly have some going right across the animals because it would look weird if they were you know, immune to the wind, the wind wasn't touching them at all. I don't know how much more I can take. It's pretty full. Pretty good coverage. I've got, yeah, thick ones, broken ones, really wispy light ones, slightly curved, straight ones. Nice little variety. And then I want to do some dots. You can see dot, 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 different sizes, different little clusters of dots. I like to use the butt of a brush, the, the wrong end of the brush. Dip that in paint. It could be white. It could be blue. Silver, ooh, that would look good. Dot away, so keep it random. Random, random, don't have a dot every, you know, exactly one inch apart. And I load, I dot, I dot, I dot, I load again. You're gonna get different sizes. Your first dot after the load is gonna be the biggest and then each one gets a little smaller do some little clusters random you could even do some dots down here in the snow, just as long as it's on sort of like a bluey patch so that people can see it. What about on the animals themselves? You can have some random dots of white. Right near the horizon. You know, I like, I like this theme as a painting, but I don't like it outside in the real world. I, I want to discourage this from happening in real life. I don't condone this. <laughs> We've got um, hmm, a few inches of snow right now. It's not bad where I'm at. Okay, do I want more? I think, I 
think it's about as snowy as it could be. Wonderful. There we go. So this video, it's going to be on our channel forever. So you don't have to necessarily be painting it live with me now. You could have been watching and you're going to do it tomorrow. You could do it with some kids over the weekend. Wouldn't that be a fun afternoon snow day activity? Maybe you could go tobogganing and then after do some painting together. That'd be so much fun. I'd love to see photos, whether it's in that Facebook group I mentioned. Um, I think I put the link to that Facebook group down in the description down here below. Join that, share with us, or you could direct message us. You could email us photos. I just, I want to see the photos. That's it. I just want to see them. Whatever colors you chose, maybe different animals, maybe a different arrangement. I want to see them all. All right. Are there any questions for me before I end this stream? Put it in the, the live chat there. If you do have a question about maybe this, maybe something else that you saw. Anything. Look how painty I got. That's not bad, all things considered. Oh yeah, that'll come off in a moment. I don't see any questions rolling in. That's okay. You could message us with any questions you have or comment on, on Facebook or YouTube with any questions you have. I had a blast, guys. This was a fun winter project the continuation of the butt series. I am not sure what the next butt image will be, but I'm open to suggestions. All right, we'll end this now. Have a lovely rest of your evening and lovely rest of your week and weekend. And we'll see you leap day. I'll be back February 29th, right here on YouTube Live. We'll do a frog together for leap day. How about that? All right, guys, happy painting. Bye now.